Okay, folks, here we go for uh, units and measurements. So, uh, first question is about a stationary wave on a wire. So, we've measured the tension, the length, and the mass per unit length of the string, and we're trying to find the percentage of uncertainty in the calculated value of the frequency for the first harmonic. Uh, so, the key thing with this sort of question is you've got to look for the equation first. So the equation for the frequency of the first harmonic that's on the data sheet, f equals 1 over 2l square root of t over mu, where l is the length, t is the tension, and mu is the mass per unit length. And then the key thing to notice in that is that these are in a square root sign. So it doesn't matter if you're dividing or multiplying with quantities, the percentage uncertainty doesn't uh, change. But if you're square in it, you double it. If you're square root in it, you halve it. We could rewrite this as 1 over 2L times T over mu to the half. And this half tells you what you do the percentage uncertainty. So this is um, the percentage uncertainty of the length, which is 0.8%, plus half the percentage uncertainty of the tension, which is 4, plus, remember the fact that we're dividing again, doesn't matter here, we add together the uncertainties, uh, 2%, so that comes to 3.8%, so that is B. Okay, question 2, which one of the following could be a unit of gravitational potential? The key thing here is the difference between gravitational potential V and gravitational potential energy, so this one is in joules, but this is in joules per kilogram. Uh, remember, this is the sort of same equivalent as the difference between the field strength and the force. Force is in newtons, field strength is in newtons per kilogram. So we're looking here for gravitational potential, joules per kilogram. So this is D. Okay, question three. Um, if you haven't done about fission yet, that's not too important for this, but we do need to know about um, how mass is converted into energy, so this is a slightly uh, tricky one possibly for you at the moment. Um, but we have got 0.23u, this is the mass which is lost during this um, fission event, so you should know that 0.23u we turn that into kilograms first, that's 0 0.23 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And then we use E equals MC squared to turn that into an energy. Um, and if you do that, it comes to 3.43 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. So that is the energy released each time a uranium-235 nucleus is split apart in a fission event. Uh, then we've got the fact that it's only 25%, so you work out 25% of this number, and that tells us that the useful energy from each fission event is 8.59 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. So then you've got to ask yourself, how many of these events do you need in order to generate 900 megawatts? Well, this is the number of events per second, so that's... The number of events times the energy in each event 8.59 times 10 to the minus 12 in one second has got to give us 900 megajoules of energy so 900 times 10 to the 6 so if you do that that gives you the number of events is 1.05 times 10 to the 20 fissions okay so that is c Okay, question four uh, is much more straightforward. 200 mega electron volts of energy converted into joules. So um, you'll need to remember that to go from electron volts to joules, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we are to go this way, multiplying by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. This is 200 mega electron volts, so 200 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That uh, gives us 3.2 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. So that is C. 
Number five, which is the following, which of the following is a possible unit for the rate of change of momentum? So there's two possible ways to work out momentum. You'll have seen it first, P equals MV, which gives the units kilogram meters per second. But you will also have seen that the impulse, the change of momentum is FT. So it's also in Newton seconds. Uh, so that's momentum, but we need the rate of change of momentum, so a rate is per second. So if we turn this into a rate, we get per second per second. So two possible units for the rate of change of momentum, kilogram meters per second squared or newtons. Because Newton's second law actually says that the force is proportional to the rate of of change of momentum. That is the correct version of Newton's second law. So really this is what force is. So the unit has to be the same as force. So they haven't given us Newtons, which would have been a, a correct answer, but they have given us kilogram meters per second squared. So the answer to five is D. Okay, number six. Um, so impulse, so impulse is force times time. Uh, so this time we've got not the rate of change of momentum, but um, the change in momentum. So change momentum has the same units as momentum. So that is kilogram meters per second or newton seconds. Are our possible answers again? Newton seconds isn't there. So it is kilogram meters per second. Okay, number seven. Um, no complications here with the numbers. We've just got to know the units. So you have to make sure that you understand and that well that you learn that we have all the units are in powers of three. So we've got uh, sorry, uh, increase in factors of a thousand. So we've got this scale. And you do need to make sure that you know all of these from 10 to the minus 15 to 10 to the 12. So we have got, uh, <laughs> sorry, try again, kilo, million is mega, thousand million is giga, and million million is tera. And going the other way, we've got milli, 10 to the minus 3, micro 10 to the minus 6, nano 10 to the minus 9, pico 10 to the minus 12, and femto 10 to the minus 15. So all we've got to do is put those in the right order. So pico is less than femto, that's so the first one's wrong, pico is less than femto again, second one's wrong, femto is less than pico, that's right, pico is less than terra, that's right, terra is less than giga, that last one is wrong there. So the last one, femto is less than pico, Pika is less than Giga, Giga is less than Terra. So they're in the same order as up here. So that one is D. Number eight, which is not a unit for power. So power will remember in the first place is watts, but what's not there. So joules per second, so that is. So the answer is not C. Then we have to try and break down joules. Best way to think about this is um, Energy work equals force times distance. So we have got newtons times meters. Always very confusing with the S's, but this is an S for displacement. So newton meters per second would be another way of doing power. Uh, so that one's there. So that is a unit. So it's not that answer. Um, now we've got to go to the newtons. So newtons, if we use F equals MA, newtons is kilogram meters Per second squared times meters per second and that gives you kilogram meters squared seconds to the minus three uh, which is this one which looks a bit like it might be wrong but actually that is correct uh, which leaves us with this one which obviously one of these two must be wrong because these two have got the same things but are different uh, powers so D is the correct answer Okay, number nine um, is 
and there's lots of different ways you can do this question, some of which might be neater than other ones. Uh, what I went for in the end is to say uh, that we know that g equals gm over r squared. So g over uh, little g over big G is m over r squared. So the units for that will be kilogram per meter squared. Uh, but then we've got a g squared on the top, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing g over g times g. So we've got kilogram per meter squared multiplied by g, but we know that g, uh, one possible unit for g is the acceleration due to gravity, which is in meters per second squared, so meters per second squared. So that gives you kilogram per meter per second squared. Uh, but kilogram per metre per second should have gone the other way, shouldn't I? Um, so what I've demonstrated there is that if you don't look at the answers, uh, you can make it quite hard for yourself. What I should have done is here, I should have said, OK, kilogram per metre squared, then I multiplied it by um, G, and the other possible unit for G is newtons per kilogram. And if you do newtons per kilogram, then the kilograms cancel out, and you end up, uh, sorry that's a minus 2, with newtons per metre squared. So the answer is D, but it's a lot easier if you keep an eye on what the, what the possible answers are. Uh, number 10, so which of the following have the same units? Um, so resistivity and resistance, they're two different things. You'll remember the equation R equals rho L over A. This has got units here, so these aren't the same. Now you might remember that resistivity is ohm meters, so this is ohm meters and this is ohms. So they're not the same. Work function, the Planck constant, so you need to be thinking about, uh, say, at the threshold, phi equals hf. So work function is in joules, the Planck constant is in uh, joule seconds. Pressure and the Young modulus, so uh, Young modulus you'll remember is E equals F L over A E but these are, this is strain and these have the same units so they cancel each other out and you do get F over A so that's the correct unit acceleration rate of change momentum we've already said rate of change momentum is um, what force is so that's Newton's acceleration meters per second squared Okay, number 11, so the fundamental, the base units, um, again it's helpful really if you go through them all just to see them rather to have, you more, have some more practice. So charge is Q equals IT, so that's amp seconds, not amps per second. Power is energy over time, uh, so that's joules per second, but joules isn't a base unit. So again, we have to go to work equals force times distance and get kilogram uh, meters per second squared as force times distance meters, then it's per second. Seconds to minus one gives you kilogram meters squared, seconds to minus three. Uh, so that one works. Potential difference okay is this is uh, v equals uh, sorry v equals e over q or w over q uh, so energy we've just said is kilogram meters per second squared times meters so that's that energy divided by the charge okay charge we've just said is amp seconds so that gives you kilogram meters squared seconds to the minus one amps kilogram meters per second squared times meters divided by amp seconds so amp seconds to the minus one gives you kilogram meter squared seconds to the minus three per amp so only this bit here is wrong so quite hard energy uh, we've already done energy so this is force times distance kilogram meters per second squared times meters uh, which is kilogram meters squared seconds to minus two. So 
So again, very close. So a tricky question there because the distractors are all almost correct. Okay, number 12, which cannot be used as a unit for Young Modulus. Again, so you start off with the easy ones. Uh, Young Modulus is the same as pressure. So Pascals can be used as a unit. Newton per meter squared can be used as a unit. That's the same thing. Uh, but which of these ones is the same thing is the tricky question. So again, we're doing uh, Newtons per meter squared is kilogram meters per second squared. That's your force equals mass times acceleration. Meters to the minus two, that gives us kilogram. Meters to the minus one, seconds to the minus two, uh, which is D. So D can be used. So C is the correct answer, as in the one that you can't use. Uh, 13, so a student carries out an experiment to demonstrate, uh, to determine the resistivity of a metal wire. She determines the resistance from the measurements of potential difference between the ends of the wire and the current measures the length and the diameter. Each measurement is made with an uncertainty of 1%. Um, so which measurement gives the largest uncertainty? So you might know this from doing it, but you're going to do R equals V over I. So you lose those numbers once you haven't squared them. So they're both going to produce 1%. So your R value is going to be 2% out, one from that, one from that. And then you're going to do rho equals RA over L. Um, so we've used that 2% number in there, we're going to get another 1% from this, but the area is going to be worked out using pi r squared. Two things you've got to realise here, when you measure the diameter and you halve it, you don't change the percentage error. Um, so this is the error in r, the uncertainty in r is 1%, but then you're squaring it, which makes that 2%. So your total uncertainty is uh, 5%, 1% from V, 1% from I, 1% from L, but 2% from the area because you squared this number here. So the biggest problem is the diameter. Okay, so last one, uh, the equivalent of the ohm, R equals V over I. So think about these two quantities. Um, look at your answers. We've got joules in here, so we need to know that volts, potential difference is energy per unit charge, E over Q. So we have got joules per coulomb. Current is amps, so joules per coulomb per amp. Then you look over here, we haven't got amps, so we've got to work out that amps is coulombs per second. So we've got amps to the minus one, so we've got joules per coulomb per coulomb times seconds. So joules, coulombs to the minus two seconds, uh, which is B. Okay, and the last one, kilowatt hours, which um, we used to do lots of in GCSE with the cost of electricity. But um, you might not have seen them these days, so a bit tricky. A kilowatt hour, so one kilowatt hour means one kilowatt for one hour. So you've got to turn that into joules. So you do uh, a thousand watts times three thousand six hundred seconds. So that is three point six times ten to the six joules. Then we need to turn it into electron volts. So you need to know again that one electron volt equals one point six times ten to the minus nineteen joules. We're going this way, so we've got to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So we're doing 3.6 times 10 to the 6 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Um, and that gives us 2.3 times 10 to the 25 electron volts, which is D.